Well, anyway, well, speaking of Kolchak, a, an aging, balding newsman who has lost his grip on the pulse of America and at the same time is rapidly being pushed down the list from major news service to minor news service. Let's talk about Uncle Dave. What now? Well, I understand that they gave out some awards of the year for wrestling over at the, uh, the, the fine folks that observe all this stuff, the W O N awards. And, uh, some of them I have understand have, have given new meaning and new weight and new gravity to the word preposterous. Well, we can find out the wrestling observer newsletter, 2023 awards are just published. In the February 26, 2024 issue, here's what it says. The following are the results of the 43rd Annual Wrestling Observer Newsletter Readership Awards, along with a listing of the previous winners in the various categories. On a worldwide basis, these are the most covered mainstream international pro wrestling awards. The awards are based... Again, again, isn't that really like being the nicest guy in prison? The awards are based on the time frame from January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, and the readers are encouraged to send in their comments on the results. These and, are the and, and the people that vote for these awards are the people that read Dave's publication, right? Well, not all of them. They are only open, I believe, to subscribers, but for example, I am a subscriber. I've been getting it since 1993. I may have voted in the year-end awards five times. Well, yes, but I'm saying you would to vote in his awards, you would have to have knowledge of the awards and his publication and read it on, if not regularly, a somewhat regular basis to want to vote in the fucking thing to begin with, right? You would think so, yes. Okay, so the the voting pool is somewhat colored by I would think more people read Uncle Dave's writing because they agree with him than the ones that disagree with him because all of us have thrown up our hands and just gone i can't take it anymore well these are the category a awards they are determined by points on a five to three to two basis okay and there has to be some kind of mathematical formula <laughs> this is like the electoral college of wrestling <laughs> with dave even if you get all the votes you got to have the right kind of votes because some of them have more points than the other kind of votes First place votes are in parentheses. Of course they are. The, lo <laughs> <laughs> the <And> lo <laughs> second place second place votes are in brackets <laughs> and third place votes are in quotation marks. The Luthez slash Ric Flair Award <laughs> for Wrestler of the Year. The winner with 302 first place votes and a total of 1,814 points, Will Ospreay. <laughs> Coming in second place, 100, 119 first place votes, with 1,330 total points, Cody Rhodes. Oh my, if, if only, if Cody puts his nose to the grindstone and he works real hard and he dedicates himself to that upward mobility, someday he can dream of having the career that Will Ostrich has. In third place, with 80 first place votes, 927 total points, MJF, followed by Roman Reigns. Oh, him? Is he still around? Well, he has 106 first place votes, but only a total of 904 points. What the? And then there's a big drop off, fifth place, Brian Danielson. 49 first place votes, but only 590 total points. Oh, I'll just go through the rest of the list here. Mystico, Seth what? Rollins, Mystico. He's the wait a minute. Mystico out points or out places or out ranks or shits on Seth Rollins in the wrestler of the year top 10. Well, Mystico got 30. Now I'm going to do the first place votes again. 34 first place votes to Seth Rollins is eight. Oh, well, there you at, there's it right there. Matt, you can't, you can't come back from that. No, I look at the points here, 500 and, or 458 to 227. There's just no contest oh, no. here. After Rollins, we have Kazushka. Once, once, he, once he lost Virginia, the tide had turned. <laughs> we have Kazushka Okada in eighth place, followed by Kento Miyahara in what? ninth place. What? 
eighth and ninth place. You have a problem with that? Who, who is Kento Yamahura to begin with? Even when we cover Dave's drivel, I've never heard that name written out in or spoken before. Have you? You know the O'Shea Jackson rule. O'Shea Jackson Jr., excuse me. You know the rule. You're not allowed to ask who is this person when it comes oh, to anyone yeah. that you don't know. Just accept right. that they are there and they are great and you're not with it. One of the top 10 wrestlers of the year in the, in the, in the world, apparently. And we have a tie for 10th place with zero first place votes, <laughs> but 123 total points, a tie between Tam Nakano and John Moxley. <laughs> with honorable mentions for Orange Cassidy, Kenny Omega, and CM Punk. I mean, uh, I, CM Punk is an honorable mention. Uh, and he's uh, in the also category with somebody actually voted for Orange Cassidy, for Wrestler points. of the Year. Wrote that unironically, do you think? Is somebody trolling Dave or Pockets or both of them by just saying, well, let's just write down comedy shit and see if he takes it seriously? I don't think it's trolling. If there was ever an audience for him, it's the voting body of the observer awards by and large you would think not necessarily all the readership but the people that are very involved in being involved yeah because that body's in pretty bad shape and may need the fucking paddles clear well here's what uh dave wrote will osprey 30 ended up pretty clear-cut winner especially as pertained to first place votes in a race Wait that a was minute. is that one of those automatic translations on fucking Twitter where you say translate this? You... Well, I actually took out a word because it just says PT. <laughs> it says ended up as a ended up a pretty clear cut winner, especially as PT pertained to first place votes in a race that was hardest to call for wrestler of the year in many years. Unlike it's, with most years, he sounds like Nick Goulas every week. Louisville Wrestling Fans, Tuesday night you were stole one of the biggest cards I've signed in many years. Unlike with most years, when it's usually obvious who is going to win the award, this year it was unclear with strong arguments for all of the top four. Many expected Roman Reigns as the top guy in WWE. You think? Champion all year, and WWE setting business records and his part in major matches with Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, and Jay Uso but he had a limited schedule. And part of this award is having a lot of great matches during the year, as wait, well wait, as value wait. to the box office and influence. Then why were Moxley and Pockets even on it? How were they in consideration when they don't have great matches at any point in the year and they have no value to the box office? Well, to be fair, they got no first place votes. So that means someone who voted, you're allowed to vote for three people. They either got second place or third place votes. No one said that they are the very best, but it was like, yeah, I'll put them on my list. Oh, well, they, they got in a, in, in a top 10 because they were third place on 17 people's list. Well, let's move on. There's a lot of awards here. I will well, skip. Yeah, I, th I think you can need to skip a few of them. I'm going to skip the MMA ones for sure. Is that okay with you? Well, that's okay because I wouldn't really grasp the magnitude of the preposterosity of the UFC or MMA awards as we're not keeping close track. The Most Outstanding Wrestler Award in first place with 548 first place votes and a total of 3,086 points. Will Ospreay. Oh, good Lord. So AEW has got a real winner now on their hands. <laughs> wrestler of the Year and Most Outstanding Wrestler. And it, it's, it's so coincidental that this is, he's the next wave of the guy that Uncle Dave has been screaming about. He's the greatest thing that's ever happened since Kenny. And now that Kenny has a problem with his guts and can't wrestle anymore, Uncle Dave has to have a new champion, a new hero, a new He-Man. You think, you think he's got Ostrich's poster? He, he unrolled it over the top of Kenny's and just thumbtacked him right over on his wall across from his, the foot of his bed. I, I think that's a little crazy, but let's go through the rest of the most have outstanding. You, have you seen the pictures of his office? Maybe he's cleaned it. I haven't seen anything recent. Those are all old photos. I'm sure things have changed. Well, they didn't have a lot of modern shit of Dahmer. 
at first. You what? know, they had to go let's back not, in the file. Well, hold on. Dave's crazy a little bit, but let's not compare him to Dahmer. Well, I'm just saying a lot of people don't take modern pictures, current pictures. The rest of the top ten for most outstanding. Number two, Brian Danielson. Number three, Kenny Omega. Number four, Zack Sabre Jr. Number five, Kento Miyahara. Number <sighs> six, Gunther. Uh, number seven, Kazushka Okada. Number eight, Shingo Takagi. Oh, boy. Number nine, Orange Cassidy. Number 10, Mike Bailey. Honorable mentions, John Moxley, MJF, Seth Rollins, and Eddie Kingston. Names, names, names running through my head. What, who was the one shit on a shingle? What? Um, what? Shingle. <laughs> who? What happened? I don't. I don't know what just happened. You what just rattled you? off a bunch of fucking alleged names. Oh, Shingo Takagi. Shingo. Ah, <laughs> one on <a> Shingle. <laughs> and so go go down the uh, a little slower from the top down, and let's see where these people's heads at. Once again, this is most outstanding. Will Ospreay. Okay. Number two, Brian Danielson. Yeah. Number three, Kenny Omega. Yeah. Number four, Zack Sabre Jr. Yeah. Number five, Kento Miyahara. I don't have any idea. We'll pass. Number six, Gunther. There you go. Stop there. That's what I'm saying. Gunther, as most outstanding wrestler, not only is perfect at presenting himself his matches are always exciting and believable he's logical he knows how to put the thing together he knows how to get himself over and knows how to put other guys shit over too even when he's dealing with smaller greener or fucking less accomplished individuals you never see him have a stinker and he always gets the most out of everything and a fucking guy's over and he looks like he could kick the shit out of all five of the fucking people in front of him at the same time. Zack Sabre Jr. looks like a goddamn Q-tip. And fucking Danielson, bless him, he is an accomplished pro, one of the smoothest and the best in the, in the world at one time. And he's about to retire, and he hasn't had the greatest of matches over the last year because didn't he get hurt in two of like the four of them? Yeah. And, and, and these, and again, the flippy fucking darling crash TV crowd or whatever that <clears throat> Gunther is more valuable then, you know, uh, and, and I'm taking Danielson out of this. Gunther's more because of his name and his reputation, et cetera, even though he's doing some screwy things these days. But Gunther is more valuable than all those other guys ahead of him on the roster together as a name on your card to attract people or on your show to attract viewers. It's just goddamn business. And they can't... I mean... <clears throat> I don't understand. Well, let's go to Tag Team of the Year, something the Midnight Express have won in the past. Tag Team of the Year with 344 first place votes and 2,341 total points. FTR. And you can't argue with the fact, again, that FTR are the most accomplished tag team in the ring in the business today. They've been presented like complete shit, and we'll talk about that later on. But I think even the even the AEW crowd has to begrudgingly admit, you know, that the, the guys that don't give them the flips in this case are still that good. But it doesn't help them be presented any better. But I, it, it's refreshing to see that even this audience not only recognizes that, but apparently the the love affair with the Cucamonga kids is over with because they didn't didn't they didn't make top five this year, did they? Well, I'll go through the list here, and it really falls off quick, and it shows the sad state of tag team wrestling, but the Bucks didn't do much this year, which makes it stand out even more that they're even on the list. One, FTR. Two, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Three. They're broken up. Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi. Okay. Four, Takuya Nomura. Oh, come on. And Fuminori Abe, I believe. Oh, Followed by number five, the Young Bucks. 42 yeah. first place votes. 42 first place votes. So it's still, okay, maybe I was willing to give these people too much benefit of the doubt. 
The rest of the top 10, Mark Davis and Kyle Fletcher at six. Oh, Jesus Christ. Number seven, Francesco, Fran- Francesco Akira and TJP. Who are these fucking people? Number eight, The Usos. Uh, <clears throat> number nine, June and Ray Saito. And number 10, The Acclaimed. Uh, what 11 first place All was. right, well, the, the only two... Out of the two out of the three, we've heard of the acclaimed, obviously. The the other two tag teams in the top ten that anybody ever fucking heard of. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and the Usos have been broken up. No, there are no tag teams in any of these fucking companies that are over and worth a shit, which is again, you know, more of the tragedy of FTR being the you know the, do they feel like the last unicorn? Is there any way for them to somehow inseminate somebody with the grasp of, and I mean, even they, they're they trying so hard, but what the fuck is the rest of that? Really? Seriously. And we ought to be all ashamed of ourselves as a collective wrestling industry, that that's the state of tag team wrestling. Well, let's talk about the state of interviews, best on interviews, an award you previously won four times or five Yeah, how times? come awards get named after... Luthez, Ric Flair, Danny Hodge, Koichi Yoshizawa, Bruiser Brody, but I don't get this award named after me. Or the or the, either that or the non-wrestling personality. He renamed it from Manager of the Year. I ought to have one of these awards named after me after I won 12 or 13 of them. Well, you are a five-time winner of Best on Interviews. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has wanted this. I'm going to call it the Jim Cornette Memorial Best on Interviews. Well, wait, don't call it Memorial. Well, Dave maybe, killed you Maybe off. that's the loophole. I don't want it yet. Ah, okay. And we'll, we'll go, but if we, he'll do the non-wrestling personality slash manager of the year for that. Well, Best on Interviews with 199. Watch him be vindictive and name it after Heyman. 199. Well, they're still friends. 199 first place votes. Eddie Kingston. Also, 1,483 points <sighs> right on his tail. Second with 140 first place votes and 1,441 total points. So just within, within reach, MJF. Number three, Christian Cage. Number four, John Moxley. Oh, good Lord. Number five, Cody Rhodes. Wait a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can find somebody standing on a wooden crate wearing a bathrobe in the middle of Central Park that speaks as coherently as Moxley does. And if Tony Khan had a little bit of Jack Pfeffer in him, they would get him on the show and make him a star. But they haven't. Cody Rhodes at five, six, Brian Danielson, Will Ospreay at seven, <laughs> CM Punk at eight, LA Knight at nine, Wait. and Don Wait. Callis, number 10. Wait, and, and who was top three again? Eddie Kingston, MJF, and Christian Cage. So you've got people, and, and again, this is not... Uh, <laughs> in any way detrimental or insulting trying to be to Eddie Kingston, who's good in short bursts with his passion and his, you know, fervor and whatever, but you can't in any universe explain to me how someone could consider anyone except potentially Cody Rhodes or CM Punk, depending on your tastes and preferences, as the equivalent of, of a verbal performer in wrestling or any other genre as MJF. It's just ridiculous. A bunch of Hedy's friends from the independence and, and fans from the independence banded together to do something nice for him, I think, here, because you can't objectively, and that's not, that has no disrespect, Christian Cage. He's good. He's not in the level of Cody or Punk or MJF, and nobody else on this list is either. It's, you're he's, not being he's objective. Yeah, he's got an incredibly lame, which is, oh, your father's dead, or oh, your wife's horrible, whatever the fuck he says. Yeah, and, and sooner or later, everybody's going to end up dead. So his gimmick is evergreen. Problem is, it's the green it stinks. Well, let's go, Jim, now to promotion of the year. Uh oh, wait a minute. Hold on here.
With 400. This is another one of those things that Tony Khan is going to have to talk to his eventual therapist about. With 406 first place votes and 2,359 total points, World Wrestling Entertainment. In second, Boom. in second place, All Elite Wrestling, who previously won, let's see, in 2020, 21, and 22, so previous three time winner, dethroned. Here's what Dave wrote. Oh, let me finish the top 10. New Japan Pro Wrestling in third, CMLL fourth, UFC five, All Japan six, Stardom seven, Impact eight, and Dragon Gate number nine. God damn, Impact can't even beat Stardom. <laughs> Impact is the only promotion on this list with no first place votes. Oh, that's just like, oh. After a record setting year when it came to big show viewership and gates, and being among the most consistent rating draws in television, the WWE captured this award over AEW, which had won it the past three years. It, you know it kills him to be right in this. WWE's success with multiple stadium shows, creating major matches throughout the year, and pulling away from AEW after what at times was a very competitive race. It was the first time WWE had won this award since the Attitude Era a combination of their turnaround and the struggles at the box office of AEW, New Japan, and stardom. So uh, I'll stop there, but... Well, even the choir that he's been preaching to for so long has figured out there ain't no invisible supreme being in the sky. It's just Tony and his disorganized, frazzled personality. Well, speaking of just Tony, let's go to best weekly TV show. First place with 430 total. Wait, I keep doing this. With 430 votes and 2,707 points, AEW Dynamite, <laughs> which has won it every year of its existence going back to 2019. In second place, AEW Collision. Wait, wait, well, hold on. What? Followed by SmackDown. No. Followed by CMLL Super Viernes, or Vier... V... What does it say? I, Vierne... I'm, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, the Observer has small print. Followed by NXT, followed by Raw, followed by AEW Rampage, followed by New Japan on Axis, followed by Impact Wrestling, with no first place votes once again. God damn, poor followed, Impact! <laughs> followed by We Are Jesus Stardom. Christ! Oh, um, so I can understand the they want their their thing, this thing of theirs, to be in the first place. They vote for dynamite, but they're trying to actually say with straight faces again that Collision is a better show than SmackDown. It's on network television to two and a half million people. Well, Jim, the pro wrestling match of the year, previously known, I believe, as match of the year. The winner, with 474 first-place votes and 3,018 total points. Who did Will Ostrich wrestle? Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega, January 4th in the Tokyo Dome. The, the passing of Meltzer's phallus. Instead of a torch, they got a big fucking dildo, and they, put, they wrote Dave's name on the side of it. In they, could, they, they could only write Dave. They couldn't write Meltzer because they didn't have enough room. And they and and Kenny handed it off to Willie. In second place, they call it the hand jive. Willie and the hand jive. In second place, from June twenty fifth in Toronto, Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay. Oh, God damn it. In third place, MJF <laughs> versus Brian Danielson, San Francisco, March fifth. Oh yeah, that couldn't possibly compare to the two. Leaping Andretti brothers. Followed in fourth place by Swerve Strickland versus Adam Page, November 18th in Los Angeles. Oh, good Lord. That was the the garbage match spectacular, wasn't it? Followed by FTR versus White and Robinson. Oh, okay. The, the greatest tag team match of modern times and, and all of television history uh, managed to come in number five behind the preening, prancing prima donnas. Followed by Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. Followed by Katsuhiku Nakajima versus Kento Miyahara, Fuck July 15th. Followed by Will Ospreay versus Tetsuya Naito. 
followed by Queen's Quest versus Odo Tai. What? June 25th in Tokyo. Wait a minute. What number of match of the year is that? On the list? That's number nine with 19 first place votes and 189 total points. How did fucking 19 people see that match? Who are those people? I couldn't uh, tell you. My first guess would be we are stardom, but who knows? And finally, number 10 on the list, Gunther versus Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre. Well, at least they squeaked in under the wire. We will now go to the Category B Awards. These are determined by first place votes only. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are even less important. Well, once again, these are determined by first place votes only. And when you ask about who's voting on this, if Dave has a few thousand subscribers, let's say, you could tell based on the first place votes, if you add them up, just a general idea of what a small percentage of his readership are actually voting on these things. But the United States and Canada MVP in first place... Cody Rhodes, with 268 votes, followed by Brian Danielson, MJF, Roman Reigns, John Moxley, Orange oh, Cassidy, oh, geez. Kenny Omega, <laughs> CM Punk, Seth Rollins, and Sami Zayn, with an honorable mention for Christian Cage. Oh, uh, how honorable can you be? When you can't even place in a top 10 with that crew. What do you think, Cody Rhodes, a uh, U.S.-Canada MVP? I, th I think that's fair to say. I think that's something that's so obvious that you can't really deny it, which is why he won this thing with this skewed voting base. And then they got to begrudgingly stick Roman Reigns in there because he's the, you know, on top of the biggest drawing shows in the world. But again, the... the it, I think if they are actually making new fans that believe in some universe that people like Pockets and these comedy figures that they place on these lists or these just obscure whoever's that they put on these lists are over. I think that's what's driving the longtime fans of wrestling away that we have to look at shit like this. Can they really be? important enough to these people or again is this just trolling voting or what's the the, the the as the kids say the ironic voting oh, I, 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 just, I can't see how anybody would put these people on in that company in a logical universe well we now go to the koichi yoshizawa award for japanese mvp will osprey with 434 <laughs> votes did anybody from Japan actually get to be an MVP in Japan, or did Will sew all these up? No, he's the only one who's not Japanese, followed by Okada, Naito, Miyahara, Ayo, Ayo, Ayagi? Ayo. Excuse me, I don't know the a names. Ayo. Tam Nakano. Say hello to the goof guy. Julia, Sonata, Kino, and Maika. Kino? <laughs> you can lose your ass playing that shit. The Mexico MVP, Jim, Mistico. Mistico. Followed by El Hijo del Vikingo, <laughs> Rocky Romero. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The state of wrestling in Mexico right now is so moribund and putrid and has the stench of grisly death upon it so badly that the second biggest star in Mexico is El Hijo del Vikingo. We've seen him. He is the shits. Well, he's not as bad as Commander, but rounding out the list, Rocky Romero, Volador Jr., and Pentagon Jr. Mm. The Europe MVP, Jim, Will Ospreay with 754 <laughs> votes. <laughs> How does he have time? What is he, on Hogan's airline where he can fly backwards around the world and turn back time? How is can he possibly be the greatest wrestler on Nine continents around the world all at the same time. The Hodge Award for non-heavyweight MVP. Will Osprey. The winner, El Hijo del Vikingo. Oh, God. With 100 years. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Them's fighting words. Hey. I'm telling you. Who are you shooting no. at? Danny Hodge would have his handgun out at whoever compared him to El Hijo del Vikingo. Can you imagine a bigger insult than a cut? 
Danny Hodge was a national sports hero in the United States before he ever turned professional wrestler. And he was one of the most feared men ever to step foot in a wrestling ring. And the only reason people are afraid of Vikigo is they're afraid they're going to have to fucking watch him. Well, for the record, El Hijo de Vikingo won last year. This award was created in 2018. The first two years, the winner was Will Ospreay. <laughs> and uh, in between, Hiromu Takahashi and Darby Allen also won the award. But this year, the top 10 after Vikingo, Takahashi, Darby Allen, Orange Cassidy, Mystico, Titan, and El Desperado are tied, followed by Mike Bailey. Brian Danielson and Rocky Romero. The women's wrestling MVP, Rhea Ripley, with 359 first place votes. Well, and is that another one you just can't deny? Because it's it would be ridiculous and to think otherwise, and and they're not fucking trolling. I don't know, but who else is on the list? But I mean, is there anybody else deserving of being on the list? Well, this is our first time winning also on the list are Julia, Athena, Tam Nakano, Becky Lynch, Tony Storm, Suzu Suzuki, Miyu Yamashita, oh. Mayu Iwatani, oh, and come on. Sayuri. Or Suri. I don't know exactly how you pronounce it. S-Y-U-R-I. Suri. Suri. It's something in there. Sarai, Sarai, <laughs> you Sarai. <laughs> All right, Topo Jiju here on the show today. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a really big show on here. Yeah, Topo Jiju. And Siri. Um, so basically, Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley are pretty much the biggest wrestling women's wrestling stars in the world. And they like Tony storm. Cause she's on their favorite little outlaw program. But, and I don't know who those fucking, well, let's go to feud of the year. Again, this is another award that you and the midnight express previously won for your feud with the fantastics. And do the they have Lions. feuds anymore? Well, feud of the year, Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the bloodline, which you forget it's a while ago, but that was a pretty hot thing for the first quarter of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Followed by Adam page versus swerve Strickland. Kento Miyahara versus Katsuhiku Nakajima. Oh, come on! Followed by Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay. Followed by Adam Page versus John Moxley. Oh, good Followed Lord. by Elite versus BCC. Oh! <laughs> followed by Rocky Romero versus Volador Jr. Followed by Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. Followed by Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. And coming in 10th, MJF versus the Devil. So I was right. They don't have feuds anymore. I be, what what can you even say? God, that's embarrassing. Most improved with 117 votes, Julia Hart. Most improved. I'd have to hear who she's rating over the top of before I could buy that statement. In second place, Dominic Mysterio. In third place, Mariah May tied with Shota Umino. Wait, wait a minute. How can Mariah May have improved? We never saw her until fucking six weeks ago. And well, you she wrestled more than once. The Observer readers saw her in her most primitive of stages. And then, of course, she became a star in stardom. And now she takes that stardom to America to be the backup of Tony where, Storm. Where, where she becomes a shooting star that turns into a comet. And sooner or later, craters out in New Mexico somewhere. Well, number five on the list, Swerve Strickland, followed by Yoda Suji, followed by Trick Williams, followed by a tie with Big Bill and Hikuleo, followed by the Gun Brothers. I, I, I like the Gun Brothers. I can't really tell whether or not they've improved over the last year because they you know, they're usually in something we either on something we don't watch or in something we don't want to see. Uh, and I don't know who most of the people on that list are, but I'll tell you what, I think of all the names you mentioned, I'd go with Big Bill. He is worlds above speaking and in the ring what he looked like when we first saw him, whether that was a year ago or a year and a half or however long it's been. I'd go with Big Bill. I don't n notice a yeah. 
noticeable difference in any of those other people if I could pick them out of a police lineup. Well, Dominic's gotten better at the art of being a heel. Swerve Strickland, I don't know if he's gotten better. He's just used better. They're just using him better yeah, than they used yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And well, and and I forgot about Dominic being on it when I zoned out with some of those names. But Dominic, just by virtue of having a year's more experience, is better. Um, but I don't know if it's a drastic, you know, light bulb moment or whether he's just getting better and better. Whatever, you know. I think Big Bill, when I first saw him, wasn't worth a shit, <laughs> and, I, and it was like a year and a half ago. Dominic wasn't wasn't worth two shits as a babyface when we first saw him. But that was, what, about three years ago now or more? And for the record, you previously managed one of the winners of this award, Big Bubba Rogers, in 1987. But most charismatic, I'll go through this one quickly, the winner MJF, followed by Roman Reigns, Kento Miyahara, (laughs) Julia, Cody Rhodes, Eddie Kingston, Orange Cassidy and CM Punk are tied, Swerve Strickland, (laughs) Swerve Strickland, L.A. Knight and Dominic Mysterio rounding out the top 10. What the fuck? That's like from one extreme to the other, you have you know, the the punks and Roman Reigns and Cody's that have all of the personality and the magnetism and the charisma in the world. And then you go to the fucking goofiest preliminary bullshit you can find. I don't understand. Well, the Brian Danielson Award for Best Technical Wrestler... <laughs> So there's another one's named. I've, I'm telling you, I want the best non-wrestling performer award. Well, the Brian Danielson award goes to Brian Danielson in first place. <laughs> with 549 votes, followed by only two other people got votes. Zack Sabre Jr. with 427 votes and Josh Alexander with 17 votes. Well, really, how can you argue with that? Who, who else should win the Brian Danielson award but Brian Danielson? In the years that Brian Danielson didn't win when he was retired, Zack Sabre Jr. won the award. So the only two people to win it since it was named after him are him and Zack Sabre Jr. The Bruiser Brody Memorial Award for Best Brawler. The winner with 383 votes, John Moxley. Oh, good Lord. Followed by Tomohiro oh, Ishii. Oh, no, no, I can't take it. Followed by Adam Page, Eddie Kingston, Gunther, Rush or Rush. Shingo Takagi, Julia, and then tied is Samoa Joe and Sheamus with seven votes. The best. Well, fo- oh, go ahead. Hold on, hold on. They don't even know what they're talking about or what or what the description of the category is, apparently, because Gunther is a not only a a wrestler, but a wrestling heel. That's his, 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 he's not a brawler at all. That's his whole gimmick is that he's a physical, athletic, wrestling heel, as they used to say in the old days. And what they're looking for is apparently is people who do stupid garbage wrestling and they don't care whether it looks phony or not. In that case, there is, Moxley's your man. But, uh, but uh, this is a whole audience where this stuff is not embarrassing to them and it is to people who have enjoyed wrestling for a long time and can re- respected it, considered it a, an art rather than a place where people who bite the heads off chickens go to retire. You can still see the feathers coming out of Moxley's mouth. Well, Jim, we will go to Best Flying Wrestler. The winner, with 595 votes, El Hijo del Vikingo, <laughs> followed by Will Ospreay, <laughs> Ray Phoenix, Mascara Dorada, Commander, Neon, Ninja Mac, Mystico, El Fantasmo, The Starlight Kid, and Titan. To show you just how badly the knowledge of wrestling of the Observer readers has eroded in the last 30 or 35 years since it's been started being published. You know, Bobby Eaton won best flying wrestler one year. And just like bruiser Brody would be embarrassed to get in the ring with fucking John Moxley, Bobby would be embarrassed that these 
glorified fucking B level flunk out fucking high school gymnast would be uh, in the running for any kind of award in the wrestling business. Their shit stinks. It looks phony. It's contrived. It's fake. It's horseshit. And it's all interchangeable. That's like picking the best fucking set of legs on the 20 girl chorus line. Who gives a shit? They're all fucking legs. You can't tell them apart. It's the stars you're looking at. I thought he won that award too. He didn't. Bobby never won best flying wrestler. He won. I'm sorry. He did play second. He won most, uh, most underrated, most underrated three times. Three separate times. Concurrently, once, once or twice when we were the world tag team champions. Well, let's, uh, we'll go to most underrated in a moment. Most overrated, number one, Sonata, followed by Roman Reigns, CM Punk, <laughs> Tyrus, MJF, Austin Theory, what Nia Jax, that? Chris Jericho, LA Knight, and Jake Lee. I can understand them taking their venting and frustration out on Punk because he's successful despite their best efforts. But why are these people mad at MJF now? I think he's overrated. Well, he didn't have the best year. But a lot, well, of, that that's because true. Of, a lot of that was because of what he was working, yeah. who he was working with and the feud and everything else. But most underrated, Chad Gable with 84 votes, followed by... Kanosuke Takeshita, Daniel Garcia, Mike Bailey, Yoda Suji, Ricochet, Rush, Commander, Britt Baker, and Adam Page. Where's Gravity? He's not underrated. He's rated just right. <laughs> Rookie of the Year, Jim. The winner, I'm sure you are already saying it in your head, Yuma Anzai. Yuma Anzai, followed by Action Andretti. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> well, that was number two. Number three, Megan Bain. Number four, Oleg Bolton. Number five, Kelani Jordan. Number six, Oba Femi. Oh, who, what? Number seven, Billy Starks. Wait, I've heard who, of her. Who, Oba Feminine? Oba Femi, O-B-A. And then the last name is F-E-M-I, Obi, Obafemi. Obafemi? Obafemi. I misspoke. I got, right before Oba is Oleg Bolton. So Oleg Bolton, <laughs> Kalani Jordan, Obafemi. Wait a minute. That means Michael Bolton and Oleg Taktarov had a fucking kid? Oleg Taktarov. Very impressive that that'd be the person you mentioned. I don't believe that uh, this is the spawn of them. How about Oleg Cassini? I don't know why you think the spawn of them would just take each of their name and <laughs> combine it together. Well, like I don't a know. Rocky Maivia kind you... of situation going on. I don't know which one of them you think might have gotten pregnant if what I was saying had any basis in reality. Number so. seven, Billy Starks. Number eight, Santana Jackson tied with Futuro. That is how you say that. And number 10, Wakana Urahara for Rookie of the Year. Best non well, I get what, what was Braun Breaker was last year, right? Braun Breaker won it last year. So if we go from Braun Breaker to that fucking list. Is there a future for the wrestling business? What bunch of fucking nobodies. Here is the last uh, five years. 2018, Rookie of the Year, Ronda Rousey. 2019, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. <laughs> 2020, Pat McAfee. 2021, Jade Cargill. And 2022, Braun Breaker. That wow. says a lot about Rookie of the Year, because, I mean, Jade, it's almost like she's a rookie again, you know? But it's the same point, at least, you know, everybody there except for the the odd duck in the middle. Who was that middle one? Didn't fit? Scapegoat Jack Perry. J Jack Perry, that didn't work out well. Uh, but, you know, you, you go from at least the potential of all those other names, whether in Cargill's case it's been realized or not, to what the fuck there's nobody there it was a bad well, year for growing crops speaking of there's nobody there best non-wrestler now this used to be manager of the year yeah count those cornets down there that's why i'm i'm, I'm lobbying to have this the jim Cornette award for best non-wrestling personality because i have won 
that award more times than anybody else has won any of these awards. Well, again, this recognizes Manager of the Year, which existed from 1983 to 1996. You won it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Shelly Martell, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times. The only people who won it other than you. Keep going further ahead. Didn't I pick up another one? Well, then it became best non-wrestler. You won again in 2006. Yeah. Best non-wrestler. And they took some years off. And by the way, Sherry won and bless her, but that's the year that I was, uh, took off while I was starting Smoky Mountain Wrestling. So I was not in the running. Well, the winner this year with 266 votes, Don Callis, (laughs) followed by Paul Heyman. Okay, all right. <laughs> and without even being in any way uh, 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 less than complimentary to my old buddy Don, there's no way on earth where anybody could objectively look at that and say that Paul Heyman is being outperformed in his chosen profession by Don Callis or almost anybody else. It's just not possible to objectively say that. Well, let's go through the rest of the list. Paul Heyman, number two. Number three, Prince Nana. Number four, Renee Paquette. Number five. Hold on on, on a second. (laughs) Now we've got where I used to have some stiff competition that I had to elbow out of the way on this son of a bitch. We are we are talking. Think of all the. The great managers that I had to contend with, the J.J. Dillons and the Gary Hart's and the the Oliver Humperdinks of the world, and and the Jimmy Hart's, much less the Gary Hart's. And Nana, love him to death, but he never speaks. He dances. And Renee Moxley Good is a fucking interviewer. And not even an interviewer that does anything different than all the other interviewers. She just has a bigger wardrobe. So that's the top four <laughs> non-wrestling personalities in... I mean, you know, maybe Marvez hadn't broken into his secret closet at home. He might have stuff that puts hers to shame, but... Well, <sighs> number five on the list, RJ City tied with Nick Aldis. Oh, what the fuck? Followed by Nigel McGinnis. Followed by Samantha Irvin. <sighs> So what was manager of the year now has interviewers and ring announcers. On the list. Okay. And again, Nick Aldis has been remarkable and is being used in a prominent position that he's done well at in a fucking major company on television. So is Adam Pierce. He belongs on that list because over one of their fucking ring announcers. How much ad libbing is the ring announcer allowed to do? How much... What are the skill level involved in being a fucking ring announcer, for God's sake? If you can speak in public and read the card and have any kind of personality. (sighs) Well, speaking of personality, best television announcer. This is an esteemed award previously won by people like Gordon Soley, Lance Russell, Jim Ross, and Mike Tanay. Joey Styles had a little run there, too. The winner this year, once again, Excalibur, 183 votes. Right behind him with 139 votes, Ian Riccoboni, followed by Kevin Kelly, Nigel McGinnis, Chris Charlton, Michael Cole, Tony Schiavone, Taz, Jim Ross, and Jay Church. Jay Church? I don't know who Jay may be. Well, going back to the top of that list, so uh, I will admit that JR had, had more energy in his youth. And Michael Cole, even though he's professional and polished and on the big program, he's not the most wrestling fan-friendly announcer because of his Vince and Kevin Dunn training. But what the fuck, again, is the matter with people that can't tell the difference between Ian Riccoboni, who's a, a, a guy that's trying to do a professional fucking job and, and inject some personality into it from this basement Pop-tart eating fucking masked mark that is just screaming endless Japanese words and phrases to his fucking VHS trading buddies from 25 years ago, even though he's a middle-aged man who, after I've seen a picture of him without that sock on his face, I understand why he wears it. He's an ugly, ugly man. He is not a good-looking man. (laughs) 
it, there's a number of things wrong with his face that surgery would need to to repair and uh, implants and f- sometimes something uh, in parts of it some stuff needs to be taken out as well as other parts needs to be put in but what the fuck seriously well the worst television announcer in first place was Booker T followed by Kevin Patrick the panting announcer if- followed by Jim Ross Michael oh. Cole Corey Graves Kevin Kelly, Chris Jericho, Matt Stryker, Vic Joseph, and Tony Schiavone. I don't see why anybody would vote for Kevin Kelly as the worst over some of the rogues gallery of names that were just listed, and to vote for Jim Ross being the worst announcer when he's 72 years old and he's had fucking multiple surgeries and health issues, just don't put his name down. Don't vote for him for anything, out of a little common respect. And there are fans who voted for Shivani as one of the announcers of the year, so there's certainly a, just a whacked fan base who doesn't understand what professional wrestling commentary is supposed to do and how effective it should be. But Jim, the best major wrestling show in first place? AEW Revolution! <laughs> March 5th in San Francisco, 188 votes, followed by Forbidden Door in Toronto, AEW All In in London, WrestleMania Night 1, AEW All Out Chicago, Stardom All-Star Queendom, <laughs> New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom, Ring of Honor Kiji Muto's Last Love, What? AEW Wrestle wait, Dream. Wait a minute, Kiji Muto did a porn flick in Ring of Honor? Well, apparently the event at the Tokyo Dome, it says Ring of Honor here, it was a Ring of Honor show? It says ROH Kiji Muto's Last Love. I think there's... <laughs> Dave Dave skips his medicine every once in a while because of his memory. It's it, the thing is pressing on the prefrontal lobe. Well, let's go to the worst major wrestling show. But wait, that was just gibberish. I don't remember what matches were on those fucking shows. No, so that's just gibberish. I don't know what the fuck that was. The worst major wrestling show: WWE Crown Jewel, November fourth in Saudi Arabia. Followed by NWA Samhain. I think that's the one with the cocaine incident on it. You know, to, <laughs> the fact that nobody saw that thing and it still made such an impression indicates that it must have been fucking rotten. Followed by AEW World's End, December 30th in Uniondale. I remember that stunk. That was, that was the worst AEW show maybe ever. Worst AEW pay-per-view. Followed by WWE Fastlane, AAA Triple Mania. I was about to say eight and a half. It's eight. It was on August 12th here. (laughs) NWA 75th anniversary show. WWE WrestleMania Night 2. SummerSlam. WWE Payback and NWA Nuff Said. (laughs) NWA not really winning over fans, it seems like. The best wrestling maneuver, Jim. The Will Ospreay Hidden Blade. Oh, God. Is that that shitty looking fucking knee where the people are on their knees to begin with and he hits them from behind and they got no bump to take? I'm not actually sure, but we'll find out shortly. God, that's fucking rot. He's on TV. In second place is Will Ospreay with the Stormbreaker. <laughs> follow, followed by the One Winged Angel by Kenny Omega. Of course it is. The El Hijo del Vikingo second, second rope step up 630. What the f- Followed by the Commander Rope Walk Shooting Star. Oh, God. Followed by the Adam Page Buckshot Lariat. Neon's Ramp Run Double Springboard Fosbury. What the fuck? Ilya Dragunov's H-Bomb. <laughs> H-Bomb. Leon Slater's 450 Swanton. And Okada's Rainmaker. There you go. You know what the best move in wrestling is? The RKO. Because it's the only one that nobody kicks out of. Well, no one kicks out of the one-winged angel. I don't know if we can compare the RKO to the one-winged angel. But, okay, the only one that nobody kicks out of and a man's actually delivering it. Let's now go to one of the most interesting ones every year. Most disgusting promotional tactic. (laughs) I'm going to go to number one, but then when I do the top ten, see if one of them stands out to you as being, okay, that doesn't really seem disgusting in any way. Yeah. Number one. WWE enabling Vince McMahon and him being back in power slash TKO keeping him in a position of power with 197 votes. Any problem with that being number one? I think that's that's been the big one. That's been the big one. I think that would have had to have won. Number two, the WWE's continued relationship with Saudi Arabia. 
Number three, the NWA cocaine spot on pay-per-view. Number four, I can't even say this anymore without thinking of you saying it. Power slap. <laughs> <laughs> and continuing on TV after Dana White slapped his wife. Come here, honey. Power slap. Number five, AEW signing Ric Flair. Number six, AEW Juice Robinson uses roll of quarters after the Hamas terrorist attack and doing an anti-Semitic angle. Number seven, TKO ignoring Vince McMahon and Dana White's transgressions. Number eight, Colby Covington using the death of Leon Edwards' father to promote a fight. Uh. Number nine, WWE hiring CM Punk. And number 10, <laughs> Sean Strickland openly homophobic comments with no repercussions from UFC or TKO. With an honorable mention for Adam Page drinking Swerve Strickland's blood. And on, on that list of sexual perversion and blood drinking and violence and desecration of corpses is, and they gave Punk a job. Hiring CM Punk is the most disgusting oh. promotional tactic. Some <laughs> nut voted for that. That's what's crazy. Oh, and, and let's... <laughs> Again, does he have the list of winners in years past? Oh, yeah, this is a big on this list. Award? Well, yeah. no, but think about this. We just had a list of, again, perversion and harassment and, you know, double dealing and just horrible activity all the way around from people, right? What was 19? Was it 1981? Read 1981's winner for most disgusting promotional tactic. I'll do the first couple here. 1981 LaBelle Promotions usage of the monster <laughs> claiming he was built in a laboratory. Yes, the fans called that the most disgusting thing that had happened in any wrestling promotion all year because they actually said on TV that it wasn't a guy in a fucking monster costume, that it really was a fucking monster built in a laboratory they were about to go out of business obviously but that was the worst thing that any promotion came up with to do that year that people could vote on my favorite is 1982 the most disgusting promotional attack again this year is vince mcmahon's involvement with the power of wwe and tko 1982 bob backland is wwf champion yeah <laughs> that was the most disgusting thing in wrestling that whole year the smart fans hated Bob Backlund. <laughs> the smart fans despised Bob Backlund. 1983, WWF pretending Eddie Gilbert had rebroken his neck after an original legit injury in an auto accident. See, there's an interesting one. They tried to use something legit in an angle, and the small amount of fans then in the know were offended that they would use the real thing in an angle? How does yes. that work? Because, well... Here's nothing, to be honest. Eddie was one of the first guys to get in the business to recognize the the underground network of the newsletters and the sheets and the traders and the the not only the tape traders, but the program traders, all that they could support him. And he was getting publicity. I remember he cooperated forever and ever with Terry Justice on the fan club and all that stuff. And so a lot of that community considered Eddie a friend. They'd known him since he was a teenager before he started wrestling when he was going to the fan club conventions and stuff and doing the photography. So they were pissed off that how dare they try to... He broke his neck for real in that car wreck and it could have ended his career and now they're making light of it, I guess. On tell It just... It was... That was a weird thing with the... The fans then were so protective... The fans then were more, the smart fans were more protective of the integrity of the business than the goddamn promoters are now, or were then for that matter. Well, Jim, let's go now to worst television show. In first place with 194 votes, NWA Power, followed by WWE Raw, NXT, <laughs> Power Slap, Road to the Title. <laughs> AEW Rampage, WWE SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, and Ring of Honor. This is worst television show. Well, I'm, almost every show is 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 on that list, at, and almost every show at one point or another is rotten. So you can't really argue at this point. But you know, and here are all the great awards that he got rid of over the years because they no longer have active uh, winners. Favorite wrestler, least favorite wrestler, 
worst wrestler, worst tag team, worst non-wrestler, worst manager, aka the Mr. Fuji The Memorial Mr. Fuji Award. Award. <laughs> it was Mr. Fuji every year, except it was Paul Jones, and then eventually Sonny Ono took over the award. Yeah. Worst match of the year. Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight at the Royal Rumble. Well, I mean, I don't argue with the concept because it did stink, but there was obviously, and I know that this audience sees everything. There was two guys in a fucking converted goddamn paint and body shop in front of 72 people that I'm sure had a worse match than that, but it didn't get any votes. Although some of these other people get votes doing the same thing, but I can, I can, I can uh, agree with worst major show match of the year. Uh, real quick, anything else stands out? Tyrus versus EC3. Shane McMahon and Snoop Dogg versus The Miz. <laughs> 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 Baron Corbin versus Gabe, Gabe, Gabeson. Gable Stevenson. Or Rock- Gabe Sapolsky. I thought it was going to be some kind of goddamn showdown there. Yeah, it'll be sold out at the curtain, that one. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. Jeff Jarrett versus Jeff Hardy. Julia Hart versus Abaddon and Adam Cole versus MJF. Worst feud of the year. MJF versus the devil. Oh, 167 boy. votes. And there were a lot of bad ones, but I guess maybe because of the amount of time and the amount of just the amount of time they gave that thing. And the, the time per show, the length of time that it stretched on and on, the people that were involved in it, that uh, the amount of letdown that happened with the whole thing, all of that, even the AEW faithful couldn't fucking disguise that. The rest of the top 10 for worst feud of the year, the Outcast versus AEW Originals, <sighs> Tyrus versus EC3. Oh, good Lord. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. Can't argue with that. Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. Ooh. Keith Lee versus Swerve Strickland. Ha! <laughs> did, did they ever have a match, or did they just talk nasty to each other once every few months? Is it worse feud because it never became a feud? Is, it, is that something that should make it worse feud? Because it should have been a feud, and it just never that, was a feud. That should fucking land in the, the best and worst Booker category. Number seven, Evil versus Sonata, tied with Bully Ray versus Scott Damore. <laughs> Here's one we missed. Number nine, Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And number 10, another guy that real quick had turned into, what happened to him? Where is he again? Miro versus CJ Perry. <laughs> versus his wife. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and they're gone again. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's hot, flexible, and missing. Uh, worst promotion of the year. A runaway this year with 456 votes, the NWA. Good Lord. What have they done? Billy Billy Corgan better hire some private security with this amount of heat. Second place, AAA, followed by WWE. Control your narrative. MLW, GCW, ROH, Pro Wrestling Noah, and finally AEW. So, so even this audience uh, obviously has to vote for everybody else in, before AEW in worst promotion. Best Booker. Now, this is another award that you previously won a couple times. Yeah. Uh, but, actually, you know, three times now that I see yeah, it. Yeah. Well, we know who was really accounting on this, who, who lives and breathes this type of thing. In first place with 360 votes. Paul Levesque, (laughs) followed in second place with 146 votes by the man who won the previous three years, Tony Khan. (laughs) Followed by Juan Manuel Mar, (laughs) Shuji Ishikawa, Shuji, Shuji Ishikawa, Rossi Ogawa, Ghetto, Shawn Michaels, Andy Quinlan, or Quilden, whoever he may be, and Scott Demore with 16 votes. That big TNA voting block. 16 votes for Scott Demore for best booker. You know, isn't it a shame there aren't but two bookers of any consequence anymore, and one of them is Tony Khan? Again, it always comes back to you get mad at the opportunity there was with AEW. They should be further along now than they are. They've held themselves back. 
They had nothing but advantages from the moment they started. The excitement, the budget, the network. And this is the beginning of the squander, but let's go to the next one. This is interesting, well, too. But let me, I mean, let's just, again, Tony, this means the world to him. Do you, is there going to be some way, shape, or form that he's going to be able to spin this as great? Yeah, things are great, and now we've made some big changes. We hired Jennifer Pepper Duke, and we hired um, Rocky Romero That's and QT. Ale- Alex- Alexandra Pepper Day. That was that. Her, I forget what her name was. It wasn't Jennifer? Alexandra Pepper Day. I can't even tell if you're really saying her name or if you just made up a name. I, that's, that's the name that I'm saying. All right. Well, Miss Pepper Day and everyone else is there, so maybe things will change next year. Promoter of the year. In first place with 371 votes, Nick Khan. Oh, Followed Tony, by Tony a one Khan. Two, a one-two punch to the gut. Poor Tony. He's going to call Cadbury and turn over his silver tray and stomp on some of his action figures who are probably going to have contusions. He lost to a different con. How bad do you think that hurts? <laughs> but you know what? Some things don't change in a hundred years. The two most powerful people in the wrestling business are cons. And they were a hundred years ago. The promoters there were all con go. artists. Jim, best gimmick. There are only a couple more here. Tony Storm with 239 votes, followed by Christian Cage, Orange Cassidy, Bloodline, Brochachos. Brochachos? Was that just him and Adam Cole? Was that MJF and Adam that Cole? That was MJF and Adam Cole. But that wasn't their name as a team, was it? I, they didn't actually ever... No, they had two t- tag team matches, didn't they? I don't think it was. But it was better <laughs> than you, Bebe. We're not the Brochachos. Well, then maybe there that's another outlaw team from somewhere in the hinterlands that we haven't heard of, like most of these fucking people. L.A. Knight, Dominic Mysterio, Swerve Strickland tied with Cody Rhodes, and Katsuhiku Nakajima round out best gimmick. Worst gimmick, the devil. Followed by QTV, <laughs> Tony Storm, oh. Oh. the House of Torture, the Outcasts, Abaddon, Roderick Strong, Wow. Seth Rollins. Oh. The Schism and MJF. Well, I think it's ridiculous that M- Well, MJF is a baby face, maybe because of what could be versus what was. I could see that'd be the worst gimmick he could possibly be doing. But it, I was just, I was all at Seth Franklin Rollins because AEW almost had a clean sweep there, didn't they? It's the place where bad gimmicks go to, to fester. Jim, the winner of Best Pro Wrestling Book, a book we talked about and promoted here on the show and interviewed the author, our friend Tim Hornbaker, The Last Real World Champion by Tim Hornbaker, Book of the Year. Well, uh, uh, hold on here one second. We got to go again with the I can't find it. Where'd the goddamn hands go? There they are. Congratulations, Tim. All right. Tip, tip, tiddy-o. Was there another book worth reading this past year? Yeah. Uh, yeah, number two on the list was Todd is God by Todd Gordon. <laughs> followed by Ringmaster by Abraham Josephine Reisman. Followed by The Kern Chronicles by Steve Kern and Ian Douglas. I've heard good things about that, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Followed by The Wrestling Observer Complete Collection 1989. Followed by Kayfabe, A Mostly True History of Pro Wrestling by okay. Patrick Reed. And followed that, by that, that was a big budget book. Followed by There's Just One Problem by Brian Gewertz. And finally, Populism and Professional Wrestling in the Sunbelt South by Christopher <laughs> Stacy. I don't know that book either. I, I don't know out. what the fuck that was, but uh, I haven't read Gerwitz's book because I'm afraid I'll hate him more than I already do just on the concept of him because I don't think we've ever met. I'm just. You will. I, I, I will hate him even worse. <laughs> yeah, he's a little Weasley fucking character. You won't like him. And finally, Jim, best pro wrestling documentary. The winner is Dark Side of the Rings episode on Chris and Tammy. Oh, uh, well, good. I'm glad to see that people thought the well of that episode. And those were the majority of the Wrestling Observer Awards. We went longer than we thought we would, but... Oop. Who could stop God, this ridiculousness? Good God, that did take a while, didn't it? It did, yes. I thought we started, uh, oh boy. Promo code JCE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll give you everything in the shop. 